Let your body know I don't need your name. Justin Michael Williams is joining me for this conversation. The buffet is open again. This is the second in a two-part interview. Justin is an amazing musician, singer-songwriter, inspirational performer. He is also a spiritual guide. He has shared the stage with the likes of Tammy Simon of Sounds True and Deepak Chopra. In our first conversation, we were talking about his book, Stay Woke. We were talking about how he teaches meditation to people. We were also talking about motivation for black people. That is his podcast. If you want to hear that conversation, go check it out. In this particular conversation, we are going to be talking about his personal struggles with an eating disorder. We are also going to be spicing it up here with a little bit of talk about sexuality. I am Maria. This is the Strong Body, Strong Soul Show. I hope you enjoy the buffet today. Is this too hot for you? You guys, I'm so excited that you're here, but I'm even more excited that Justin's here. <laughs> Justin Michael Williams. Thank you. I'm so thrilled. Thank you so very much for yeah. taking the time it's an honor. to spend with me here. It's an honor and to be here with you. <laughs> Seriously. Oh my gosh. You guys, I met Justin a couple of months ago now up in Santa Cruz and you were so phenomenal. Thank On the you. stage, your energy is amazing. Thank you. And I'm just so impressed. You're an inspirational entertainer. <laughs> and I love that description of you. Yeah. That is exactly what you That's are. That's what they say. <laughs> Seriously. It's just amazing. Thank you. And we're going to be talking about your new book. What's the title of it? Stay Woke, A Meditation Guide for the Rest of Us. Yeah. I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. That is what my show is about, frankly, too. About bringing in spirituality, but into an everyday way. Mm. Because I think there are so many people that think you need to be a guru in a cave somewhere. Yeah. And you don't. No. I can be walking through Costco and feel the love and energy from people in a connection. And don't get me wrong. You know when you don't like people, too. Right. Yeah, and we're you feel the anger and the aggression and stuff like that, yes, too. Yes, so. it's not all pretty. Yeah. But it's life. Yeah. And it's every day. Yeah. And I love that. Stay yeah. woke, a guide for the rest of us. Yes. The yes. thing is, is we are the first generation, for many of us, especially if we're talking about people of color and, you know, different communities, we all, many of us are the first generation with the opportunity mm-hmm. to think about these things, right. and the opportunity to have the agency to choose our life. Right, right. And so this is a moment of real power, and, and it's honoring the shoulders that we stand on. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. And the whole thing about manifesting, let's just say, meditation, contemplation, yeah. getting in touch with who you are, doesn't mean you just sit there no. and hope things happen. No, you got to get your it's ass up action. off the pillow and do something. I love that, the way yeah. you say that in the book. So yeah. It's about action, yeah. taking action. All right, let's get back to food. Cool. I want to talk about self-control. Okay. Starvation. Mm. Kind of serious stuff. Yeah, let's for go. For a moment. Okay. Let's go. Let's talk about eating disorders for a minute. Mm, All right. I knew you were going to go there. Dear to my heart, I have a niece actually that was at UCLA. Okay. She's That's a, where I went to school. I know. Yeah. She's a an athlete, beach volleyball. Yeah. And she almost died. She was mm. hospitalized. She's just now coming out of it, but she's becoming a speaker mm. for athletes, for parents, for coaches. And I just think it's such an important topic. She, as a college athlete, unfortunately, the thinner she got in the area that we live, she was getting so many compliments. Of course. She's a model. Yeah. She's gorgeous. She's gorgeous. Yeah. But no one could tell from the outside that her organs were shutting down. Wow. And it was, it was really bad. Wow. And I know that you yourself have gone through eating disorder in your history Mm -hmm. too and I just I think that when you deny yourself when you become so concerned with what other people think of you yeah I think that's what would you say is like it seems like a root cause of it there's so many causes um I you know I think I can only speak to my experience and Uh you know I've talked to a lot of people about this once I opened up about it several years ago Uh and it's not something that's talked about often with men, um, right. but it's very common. And if you look at 
the world at large and the media. Pay attention to Look how far we've come for women when it comes to body positivity and mm-hmm. different size mannequins and different images in media mm-hmm. and plus size and this size and that size. Right. For men, there has been no change. Yeah. It has stayed the same always. Mm-hmm. Six pack, broad shoulders, or skinny, skinny, skinny. Right. Right. right, right a big right, chest. Right. right. Like those are the two images that were given mm-hmm. as like these are good looking men, and that has not shifted ever. Right. And so the uh what what has, what happened for me, you know, I can say is I I think there were several things. Uh, I grew up where the presentation and the image mm-hmm. was something that was always stressed and was really important mm-hmm. in my family. Meditation is not something that's going to heal all your trauma, uh-huh. you know what I mean? But uh-huh. it is actually this beautiful safe space that we can create for, to let some of our stuff come up so that we can heal it and release it and let it go. Mm-hmm. Or at least gain enough awareness about it so that we know that we need to use other resources in our life to help us learn or grow in in a specific way. Uh And so I find that what a lot of people do, and this is one study that I found when I was writing the book, is that if we push down our negative emotions, negative emotions, I'll put those in quotes Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. there's no emotion that's negative, they're just emotions. Right. But I would say if we push down our emotions that are a little more difficult to feel, like anger or sorrow or sadness or frustration or whatever, when we push those down, mm-hmm. science has proven that that actually limits our ability to experience what we call our positive emotions. Mm. So you experience less joy, less happiness, less elation if you are also pushing down your emotions that are hard to feel because mm-hmm. emotions are just one thing. There's really in your body, they don't know the difference between good or bad. They just know that it's being expressed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so the more we allow ourselves to express the full spectrum uh-huh. of our emotional palette, uh-huh. the more we're able to paint a beautiful picture with that palette with our lives. I love that. So, the idea of balancing the light with the dark. Yeah. The good and the bad. Yep. We are never, I hate to tell you guys, we're never going to get rid of all the negative. No. There has to be negative. There has to be darkness and pain. It makes the bright times shine even brighter but we do have the power to feed the light yeah. more yeah. as much as we can but we need the dark stuff too it's about yeah. holding this paradox yes. in our yeah in our minds and uh you know i was just in chicago teaching to a group of women uh, 56 women yes. who had lost their sons yes. and some daughters to gun violence mm-hmm. and you know here are these women who have gone through, I think, one of the biggest tra- tragedies a human can go through, which is losing a child, uh-huh. you know, and uh-huh. I can't even fathom. And here they are, yes, crying and, and grieving and having sorrow, but also like dancing and singing and having fun. And and it, it life is about us learning to hold this paradox of, of all of it yes. in one space yes. and being able to breathe love and learn from and grow from the totality of all of it yes yes yes. are you ready to heat things up a little bit is it gonna get too hot in the kitchen here for you this song by the way is from justin's metamorphosis album as promised we are going to switch gears and talk a little bit about sexuality and creativity and then we're going to be talking about what parents can do when they get gifted with that little bundle of joy nine months later. <laughs> Passion exploded. And then what? Here we go. I want to talk about a little bit about willpower. Yeah. And how your energy is affected yeah. when you deny yourself certain things. Mm. So let's talk about that 90 days. Let's 90 days. Was you it mean 90 days? Nine months? Nine months. Yeah. <laughs> it was a nine in there. Yeah, nine months. I was like, I wish it was <laughs> way more than 90 days. Nine yeah. months. Yeah. You decided at some point, and this is in your book. Is yeah, right, it's right? in the book. Yeah, that's okay. how you know about it. So you guys, he's talking about celibacy. Yeah. So we're going Sexual from energy. starvation yeah. <laughs> food on the eating <laughs> disorders to let's talk about sexuality yeah. because that opens up a whole new world Absolutely. as well when you change where your energy is focused. Yeah, and you right? know, so one of the things that I feel really excited about and, and proud of really with this book is just applying meditation to some new contexts, you yes. know, and I have some uh, some practices in the book about like porn and, you know, sex and these things that, that 
people are really doing in their life. So right. it's like, how do we bring mindful awareness right, to right, this stuff? Right, right, right. So in a way that doesn't make it so The language toxic. in there is oh, yeah. more, yeah, every day. Yeah, and so uh, just very specifically, what happened for me mm -hmm. is I was, this is the real story, is I, so I am, I, I am like real, like kind of, <laughs> Woo woo, and I can get real spiritual with stuff. And uh -huh. one of the things that I that I actually love doing that's just a, a hobby and um, of mine is tarot cards. Uh -huh. And so I was in Cincinnati with this amazing teacher and friend. Her name is Brenda Via. Um, in my second uh, session of being initiated to read cards, and uh -huh. I was with Brenda, and I was just getting ready to write the book. It was it was I just signed the book deal. I was just getting ready to start writing. Um, and the deal with Sounds True had just happened, and Brenda pulls these cards, and long story short, she just said, um, you seem like you've done a lot of work on getting rid of all the distractions in your life to prepare yourself to write this book, but you're missing your biggest distraction of all. Mm. And I said, what? She said, sex. Mm. And I'm like, oh no! You know, I'm Busted. like, yeah, and, and you know, it wasn't <laughs> like I had this crazy, toxic, you know, relationship with sex, but it was, as a single 30-something-year-old guy living in uh -huh. Los Angeles in Hollywood, you know. Why not? Yeah. Having some fun here and there. Yeah, yeah. And, and so, but it was something that would keep me up late and in the pursuit of it. And, and being tired the next tired day. Tired the next and day. Yeah, and, yeah. and even just the energy that goes into, like, all the I love the way you explain stuff, it. Stuff, yeah, yeah. you know, that you're doing to yeah. see if you might. And, and even, like, you choose to go to an event and who you choose to talk to at the event uh -huh. shifts when you think there may be, like, something romantic at the end of the night. Yeah. you know and so but the whole purpose of it for me was not just about restricting it really wasn't about that at all uh -huh. um, what I know to be true and this is said in many spiritual traditions is that sexual energy and creative energy are the same energy mm -hmm. and it's because like think sex is our main mode of creation uh -huh. and creativity uh -huh. being the same energy that comes through right. and we only have a limited amount of that energy to use mm -hmm. and so if our if our um, sexual energy is on overdrive and we're trying to do a big creative project, it can uh -huh. sometimes be like we have a leaky balloon. Right, right, And right. so for me, this was less about like restricting and shutting down my creative mm -hmm. energy and more about directing, directing the energy towards something else. Yes, that and, makes And that's sense. really what it was about for me. So right. I, I very mindfully didn't kind of shut down my sexual energy, but I kept it very alive, right. which was really stressful sometimes, uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. and and learned how to use that energy towards this book and towards this project. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Um, now, <laughs> I'm going to talk about my grandmother's for a Yes, minute. yes. Only because what you just said, you said we have a limited amount of that sexual energy. Yeah. But oftentimes when I'm teaching about the second chakra, yeah. that energy, is creativity, yeah, of course, and procreation, all that stuff. But it, it's creative energy, but it doesn't go away all necessarily. Absolutely, I learned some of my bis biggest lessons from my grandmother mm. <laughs> in this regard. Really, because as they got older, yeah. both of them. I was fortunate enough to know both my grandmothers. Great, as they got older, but um, why one grandmother? She was just so funny she was very observant she still noticed men walking around and stuff like she knew and she always had like a twinkle in her eye <laughs> and i laugh because it's that that zest for life mm -hmm. and that excitement yeah is it doesn't need to be sex necessarily no that excitement exactly it is a zest for life and, yeah, and you don't, that. and that's the main thing that I like to get to people. I'm, I am in no way, shape, or form saying sex is bad. It's not. Right, it's freaking right, right. magical. Yeah, but, yeah. But uh, I find for a lot of people, it's it's a huge distraction for them, right. and they don't know how to direct that energy. It's right. like uh, the sexual energy has control over yeah, them yeah, versus yeah. them being able to harness that energy and right, direct it. And right, so right. it's something that we can learn to practice yeah, and do. Um, awesome. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of your meditations that you have in your book. Mm -hmm. You have quite a few. 33. I know. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. One of the things that I, they each have a different topic to them and a different, not a mantra. Is yeah. A mantra they each have a mantra. One, mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That you designed yeah. for each one yeah. to keep people kind of within that idea. Yeah. And that theme of it. Yeah. Now, when we talked at the beginning about having this, like, a buffet of Justin, right? Some of the things, like we talked about, 
everything on the buffet isn't for everybody. No, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So one of the ones that I wanted to ask you specifically about, by the way, is the parenting one. Ah. I was really impressed with that particular one because I loved it the way you went to your friend mm -hmm. who is a mom. Yeah. And you two could relate yeah. and come up with these great points to develop it. Yeah. And I think we didn't really talk about it that much in this particular conversation, but authenticity, yeah. you know, is underlined in everything we do. Yeah. Being authentically yourself, the good and the bad. Yeah. Our strengths and our weaknesses. Yeah. And the number one thing that we can do is be aware of where we aren't as powerful and ask for help. Yeah. So I love that, that you asked your friend Erin. I did, Erin Falconer. Right? Yeah, she's fantastic. So tell us about that particular yeah. meditation. Yeah, I'm so excited that you brought up, what, what made yes. you bring up the parenting one? Because I'm so curious. I love that one, but I'm just so curious of why you picked that one. Along the same lines of motivation for black people, Yeah. creators under 40, Yeah. I love the idea that you are comfortable going into areas that you are not. Ah, uh, got you. Yeah. You are so not a parent. I'm not a parent. No, I'm not at all. And you might be someday. Maybe, probably not. I don't know. You <laughs> might. I might, I might, I you might. might. There is a chance. I'm a great uncle. Yes. Um, I'm a fantastic uncle. <laughs> so, um, but that's yeah. what fascinated me about that one. Yeah, I, so this is why. All of them I, were fantastic. I thought, it was, I thought it was absolutely essential and crucial. Um, to have something that was directly talking to busy moms and dads uh -huh. in this book. It, and dads. And too. dads, not just because moms. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, and I think that's one thing, like so many of the books are like, for moms, for moms, right. for moms on the go. Right. Like, okay, what about the dads? Exactly. You know, I have so many friends who are actually like queer, dad, two dads uh -huh. with a kid. So, okay, uh -huh. so what about for them? Right. You know, what right. do we do? And. Um, one of the things that I hate is when somebody tries to give you like real advice when they don't have any lived experience. Right, and so right. I knew right away, I said, there's no way I'm going to even attempt to give any parenting advice to that. anyone yeah, because yeah. I'm not a parent. Right. I like have seen some things, but I don't know, you right, know what it's right, really like right. with day in and day out. So I interviewed Erin and Erin is an amazing author. She has a book called How to, Sh How to Get Shit Done uh -huh. and uh, it's done really well. And she's a mom on the go, entrepreneur, author, like, and has really lived this experience of being a mom who was also, the reason I interviewed her is she was also able to keep her passion alive at the same time uh -huh, as she was a mom. Uh -huh. So I said, okay, how did you do this? Uh -huh. And what tips do you have for new moms and dads right. to uh, like just self-care hacks? Uh -huh, the chapter uh -huh. is called Five Self-Care Hacks for uh -huh. Busy Moms and Dads. Uh -huh. And uh, then how do we use mindfulness? How do we really do it? Because when we tell a mom who has a brand new two-year-old, or I think my sister right now, my nieces are eight months old and two and a half. Uh -huh. To tell my sister, wake up in the morning and meditate for 20 minutes right. is like, oh, you might as well tell her, wake up in the morning and right. go to the moon. Right. It's just not going to happen. So what else can she do? Uh -huh. And Erin gave these amazing tips like, you know, use the bathroom as your me time. Like that, take five minutes extra uh -huh. in the shower and sit down uh -huh. or do it on your lunch break and go into your car. She gives these really practical tips that parents can use and uh -huh. I, I love that section. I learned so much. Yay. Yeah. Yay. That's just so great. And that's yeah. what any good leader or good writer anybody you want to ask people who know yeah you know and i love it that you hesitate to tell people what to do no yeah you, because Not i have here. had that experience yeah i've had yeah one experience in my mind right now is this guy mm -hmm. in a class that i was in a meditation class yeah and i was saying you know i had to do certain things and had and couldn't fit exactly the practice in he's like just say no I'm like, he doesn't understand. He doesn't, you, you know, the kids have no. to get places yeah. and we have these concerts or yeah. whatever There's is not happening. No. It's hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. The worst is unsolicited advice. And and this is why people. I very specifically say the book is meditation for the rest of yes. us. Because yes. most of the practices and most of the books and most of the things that are out there, if I can just name it, like uh -huh. much of it is for um people who have a level of privilege in their lives, that they have the opportunity to just make a lot of choices uh -huh. around when I get to do this and when I get to do that and, oh, I just can kind of wake up in the morning and spend an hour uh -huh. or, you know, it's, it's written, I think a lot of the work is written with that in mind. Yes. Not all of it, 
Right. There's a lot of really amazing work out there that takes people's right. real lives into account. But I wanted to really go to what are the things that many of us are really dealing with in our lives and how uh -huh. do we incorporate a mindful practice I love that. into that? I love now, that. I wanted to ask you about some of the, the journeys that you've been on during the course of writing the book. Ooh. Yeah. Like you've been speaking all over the world. Yeah. That sounds true. Yeah. At the gathering yep. in Santa Cruz a yep. few months ago, you were coming in from somewhere. Texas? I was coming it in was... from Texas, and before that, I was in. God, I had been. I'm, I, who knows? All and you're over the speaking place. to thousands of people. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes there's smaller Tony groups. Tony Robbins, sometimes watch out. Companies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's companies. Sometimes it's organizations. Sometimes it's, that it's is... nonprofits or small groups or big groups or it just depends. Phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal. And so you're away a lot. Yeah. You're able to travel though. Often. And Estonia. Tell me about Estonia. Oh, Estonia was so funny. So. Esto uh, the Estonia Yoga Festival, the founder of it, Meri, she reached out to me and said, would you ever come to Estonia? And it was really funny because I was like, I don't even know where that is. Uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. I had no idea. I was like, where is that in the world? And so I looked it up and they had this yoga festival and they had me come and I was the, the headlining teacher, which wow. was a dream. It was, it was my first festival that I've headlined ever, uh -huh. like as the main teacher and also um, it was international, which was Phenomenal. fantastic. And it was really fun to to be a teacher there and see the the different ways that they have their own social justice issues happening in a uh -huh. country like that right next to Russia and and how similar you know so many of us are in in certain ways right um, and with the struggles that we're facing in our daily lives and and so I was really proud to see how much of the teachings really crossed over into right. this completely different environment well I think that's just such a beautiful thing that social media yeah makes it possible yeah it's globalized our world for the good or the bad or whatever yes. it is that it has yeah well it makes it possible to connect with like-minded she found me on social media that is yeah. so awesome so and some of your it. webinars your classes yeah some of them I see you saying oh I'm so excited there are 800 people on here from yeah. 20 countries yes and yep. then the next one, there are 1,200 people yeah. from like 30 countries. Yeah, I've had and it a just really keeps great time. expanding. Yeah. And it's just so amazing. Thank you. It really is. Uh, there will definitely be another book coming. I don't know what it is just yet. I have right. several ideas kind of knocking on my door. Percolating. Yeah. Percolating. Yes, so we'll yes, see. yes. And the more you teach, the more, the more learn. you learn. Yeah. Of course. So yeah. what's, your, what's your next thing coming up? In 2020. We are going on the Stay Woke Give Back Tour. Oh, yes. Which yes. is the part of this that's actually the most exciting to me. Yes. So one of the things that's happening right now that is is really empowering and exciting is um, going to these impacted cities and we're right. giving away books and we're doing big events and we've created a text messaging system that guides students through a 40-day meditation practice for long-term support. Okay. And it's just so exciting to me to be going on the road and serving kids who grew up often like I did, you know, and need um, and and would benefit from a message of hope and inspiration and empowerment to see what's possible for Love them. That. Yeah. Thank you so very much, Thank Justin. You, yeah. Oh Such my an honor. gosh! Go buy the book. Buy his album too. Yes, Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. I yeah. love it. You were so amazing. On and stage I also want to say Cruz. that if people want to. Uh, give to our mission to bring mindfulness to schools. Yes. This is a huge mission. Um, they can just go to staywokegiveback.org. Okay. Staywokegiveback.org, very importantly. And that will take you to the Sounds True Foundation uh -huh. website. And you can donate as little as $8. That's how much it costs to give this movement to one child and upwards of whatever it is that you feel comfortable with. And we take donations of any amount. They're all tax deductible. And every single dollar goes towards this mission to bringing mindfulness into communities that are, are really dealing with a lot of difficulty like trauma and gun violence and homophobia and oppression. And we're really trying to bring that into as many communities as possible. Right, yeah. And you're gonna be going to these cities. Yes, I'm going. Tour. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they're so lucky to have you. Thank Are you going to sing? Yes, at the, of course at I'm going to sing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how amazing. Of course I'm going to sing, that. so that'll be really good. I love good. that. Yeah. So speaking of singing, we're going to play some of your music. Ah, oh, fantastic. So I hope you guys enjoy some of Justin's music. Thank you. And uh, go buy the book. Thank Stay you so much. Broke. Yes, thank you, Maria. Yay. Again. And I 
Set yourself free. Set yourself free from your preconceived ideas about what meditation is. Go ahead. Don't forget that this is the second in a two-part conversation. In the first one, we were discussing meditation tools that you can use in your everyday life. Justin was explaining how to connect with your unique way of finding your own spiritual path, setting up your own mantra. That was in the first conversation. I want to thank the Sounds True Foundation for making it possible for great people like Justin to reach out into the world and help elevate others. Don't forget to find the Stay Woke Give Back Tour online. Check the show notes here to find out more about Justin, more about Sounds True, and how to buy your copy of Stay Woke. Don't forget that you can subscribe to this show. It's called Strong Body, Strong Soul. You can make comments, ask questions, and share, of course, with whoever you like. I am Maria, just in case you forgot. And I hope you're enjoying the show here. Come back another time. I love you.